Welcome to Lard Island where you find me drawing up a grid for a campaign with sharp practice. Now, those of you who uh, listen to the latest podcast know that we talked on there about solo gaming and with the whole world locked down uh, we thought this would be a great opportunity to start out by running through a few ideas on how we were going to put solo games together. And I thought one of the fun things might be to work that out on the basis of a campaign. Uh, and so we can play through those ideas over a number of games. Now, um, some of you will know that we produce uh, a lot of pint-sized campaigns for Chain of Command. Uh, and many people ask the question, why haven't you done the same thing for Sharp Practice? Well, the fact of the matter is we have, but we've done it in a different way. The Dawns and Departures Campaign Handbook uh, for sharp practice allows us to create three types of campaigns. They're very, very simple to create. They're very, very simple to generate the uh, terrain and then to create objectives. So rather than uh, us taking uh, uh, setting out specific uh, campaigns for, for you to game, it's a system that allows you to roll some dice and create those for yourself. There are three types of campaigns in there. There's the ladder campaign, where you simply progress from uh, one nodal point to the next, maybe take the town, then move on to take the crossroads, then the bridge over the river. Uh, and that obviously works on very much a ladder campaign basis that people will be familiar with from Chain of Command. Um, then there's the programmed uh, campaign, which is the results of one battle will then determine by almost a flowchart where the next action is going to be. And then we have the narrative campaign, which is the system that we recommend and uh, prefer. So I thought today we'd have a look at the latter. Now, imagine uh, our map. Um, let's think about that as a chessboard. Um, a chessboard creates a defined playing area for a game of chess. Obviously, all play takes place within the board. What we do is use just 24 squares of that board to create our playing area. Each of these is populated with terrain using a system of dice generation. The central eight squares are the main road that runs through our terrain. Think of most military missions. The objective is to, be, is to advance from London to Chester, Berlin to Paris. Uh, and this is very much the main road that runs through the centre of that. Uh, and then the eight squares... Uh, to each side, 16 squares in total, are the countryside around that. Okay, so let's take a look at how we begin creating our campaign map. Um, I was keen to do something with an Austrian army that I was due to take to Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago for a sharp practice weekend, which sadly uh, didn't happen. Uh, so I thought we'd uh, take an opportunity to use them and have a look at some of the solo gaming options that we've been discussing on the oddcast. So what I'm going to do is I've got the table here which shows us um, the terrain types for the main road area and for the adjacent areas. Now the reason those two are different is it's more likely that you're going to get towns on the, on the main road than off on the cultivated land or through the uh, adjacent land to the side. So let's uh, roll some dice and see exactly what we get. So we're going to go down the central column first of all. So we've rolled a six. So in our top box, we've got a village at the very top of the map. And below that, we've got a seven, which is cultivated land. Then below that, we've got eight, which again is cultivated. So we've got some farmland coming up there. Then 11, we've got a significant building there. So that could be an inn, it could be a monastery. So make a note of that. Uh, then we've got a six, which is a village. 
So it's likely to be something like maybe an inn on the outskirts of a village. And then six, which is another village. So this is fairly densely populated, this area. And cultivated land. And more cultivated land at the bottom. So now we look at our adjacent areas. I'm going to start on the left and I'm literally just scribbling this up uh, because we're going to turn this into something much better looking. So it's just really identifying what's in each of those. So we've got heathland here. What have we got? Ten. Oh, we've got an outlying village here. And five is going to be hills. Now, where hills are, we've got potential for there to be rivers and woods as well. So we'll see how that goes. So we've got more hills here off to the... So you can see where our roads were, we actually got no hills, but it's off to the sides where the hills are, which is logical. So that's cultivated land there. And more cultivated land. So this is going to be a real pastoral scene cultivated land there and then the right hand column oh we've got a mountains right and then we've got hills and then we've got heathland followed by hills cultivated land so it really is a very very quick simple process uh, more cultivated land and oh significant building and then finally hills so um, we want to see where we got mountains present on a four five or six there's uh, woods uh, sorry, it's on our three or four, it's wood, and the five or six is forest. So we've got forest over there. And then on the hills below, on a four or five, it's wood, and a six, it's forest. So more forest. And then we've got heath, so nothing there. So hills here, we roll again, and they have got woods. We've got wooded hills there. So you can see some terrain types can have different. And hills, so we've got more forest down here. So we really are in a lower... Germany, maybe Bavaria, maybe Upper Austria. Um, let's try hills over here, nothing there, and hills over here, nothing there. So the woods and forests are off to the east, to the west, it's much more open. Okay, so let's have a look now uh, at rivers, because where we've got hills or mountains, there's a potential that there's water running out of those. So we'll start at the top where you've got the mountains there. And yes, indeed. So we've got a river coming through here. So I'm just going to put a wiggly line. But there we check what type of bridge that we've got there. And on a one or two, it's a wooden bridge. So make a note of that, wooden bridge. And then the next one down, there's nothing coming out of those hills and forests there. This one here, there is a river there. Uh, and so we go across there and let's see what type of bridge we've got and that's a stone bridge Make a note of that and then we've got forests and hills down here nothing there and we've got hills over here as well nothing there so that is our uh, map and uh, uh, what a mess it is however we can now turn that into something uh, much much nicer by using the Dawns and Departures Terrain Pack, which uh, have been produced for us by wargaming artist Jim Ibbotson, who's produced a set of 100 plus tiles uh, for us to use in Northern Europe. He's currently working on uh, the next sets, which are gonna be for Southern Europe, uh, Latin America, and uh, also for North America, uh, where obviously we've got quite different terrain types uh, in play there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at using those terrain tiles to turn that into something a lot better. Once we've done that, we'll find out what our mission is. OK, so going back to our chessboard, we're going to squidge that down. So we've just got our 8 by 3 section and we're going to squash it. And then um, 
bring it up to size so we can work with it and then actually we're going to replace it all with um, a document in PowerPoint which I've used here. What I've done is I've created uh, a whole series of boxes here, 24 boxes, and uh, each of those are 5 centimetre wide by 3.1 centimetres deep and that basically allows our image to fit in them um, perfectly. And what I do is I click on uh, each tile and uh, click fill. And when you click the little fill uh, box in PowerPoint, you have you can click picture or texture fill. Then I click insert and go to the file where uh, all the images are. And then I can choose the one I want and fill those in. So we can see here, I've dropped the first one in on the road and that uh, is our little village up there and then the next one we're going through cultivated land followed by more cultivated land then we get to our significant building and that's a significant building is on the river there because that's where the river was and then we've got a village and another village and then down into cultivated land and more cultivated land there at the very bottom so a lot of variety on that uh, on that road and then just to fill in the ones on the left and you can see the box outlines here in blue and then we fill in all the ones on the right that give us uh, our entire picture and uh, then I just click the whole uh, thing and remove the line which gives us a much neater and nicer map and we can actually look at that in some detail here here's the top part of the map where we've got those mountains off to the right and the forests and then we've got the road coming down and going past the significant building which I think we've decided now is an inn by the bridge there and then if we look at the next bottom half of the document you've got those two villages and the hills on the left and lots of countryside down there and a big mansion type farm set off on the right hand side before we go back into forests. So there we go, that shows us how to create our map. So having generated our map, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find out our campaign background. That's gonna give us the background to what's been happening and also to tell us what our objectives are. So we rolled two dice on our table. So I've rolled a two and I've rolled a four, which means that the objective is the bridge. So let's move down to find that scenario. Here we go, nice and easy. Is My mission is to rebuild a bridge which has been damaged in recent action. I've got with me a force of engineers who were equipped for that task. I've got to accompany the engineers and ensure the bridge is repaired. For the secondary player, that's, that's my opponent. Uh, in this case, my imaginary solo friend. Uh, his or her mission is to protect the territory from enemy incursion. They've received word that uh, my force has crossed the border and is at large in their territory and they are obliged, they want to oblige me to withdraw from that. So um, an interesting one in as much as the scenario that I have got is a defensive one and my solo opponent is actually going to have an offensive role. And we'll talk about this in our next video where we're talking about solo gaming and uh, how to try and put some ideas together to make um, the situation as uh, interesting as possible with a, uh, with a solo game. So um, we've got to have one bridge in area 8, 11, 13 or 17 and we've definitely got that because that's... Uh, uh, three of those central um, road areas and I know we've got that so we can look at that and both sides begin the campaign with 12 sacks of supplies so foraging is something that's going to be relatively important in the campaign um, but at least we've got some force to start with and we both start with an equal size main force and the secondary player may place an outpost of two groups of regular quality in any inhabited area on the map um, so that should be interesting. So the enemy's got some uh, garrisons in place uh, and how that affects the campaign 
we will have to see. Okay, so there we've got our map. Uh, this is our objective. Uh, we can see there the bridge in the centre, pretty much the centre of the map. And this is where I'm going to be entering the table with my force, where the big red arrow is at the bottom. My opponent can apparently come onto the table in any of these top five squares. We're not sure which. And again, he can have outposts in any of these four uh, tiles where they've got um, you know, a decent sized built up area. What we've done there is we've rolled up our campaign. We've put together the, a beautiful map using the Dawns and Departures campaign tiles. And um, what we'll, I'll do now is I'll go away and have a look at this and think about how we're going to work this out with the solo campaign uh, before we start looking at getting it on the table. So thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any comments, feel free to put them below. Um, we'll try and answer anything that comes up there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so we can keep you informed of what we've got coming through. Uh, we're trying to produce uh, uh, more content because of the lockdown situation. We hope that it's going to keep you informed and entertained and stop you going completely crackers. And uh, good luck to you all out there. Keep well and keep isolating. And we will uh, look forward to seeing you very soon with some more information on Dorms and Departures and Solo Gaming.